Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to the weekly news in VR. Today we will be talking about how scalpers have massively inflated RTX 3080 prices. Three new stories for the Quest 2. Number one, Oculus are not relying on third parties for comfort mods this time. Number two, the XR2 processor supports Wi-Fi 6 with speeds up to 250% quicker than the previous standard. And number three, the new LCD panel can do 90 Hz and more. And finally, why John Carmack is the godfather of VR. So let's get straight into it then, and remember, we are born to respawn. Before I start with the weekly news, the channel is really starting to pick up now, and it would help me a lot if you like this video and consider subscribing to the madness that is Mac in VR. Thanks. The launch of NVIDIA's brand new RTX 3080 GPUs has turned into a disaster for the company. They did not implement any recapture or address verification into the pre-order process, so consequently scalper bots snapped up all available items within seconds, then regurgitated them onto reseller markets like eBay et al. I found this one on sale for £28,000 and they even had the audacity to slap on 9.99 shipping. They are looking back at all orders and trying to weed out the obvious scalpers, but really all it took was a simple verification process. On the bright side, prices of RTX 2080 ties have skyrocketed too. During Oculus Connect 7, I know, that never gets old. During the Facebook Connect 7 presentation, Oculus revealed that they would not be relying on third-party companies for the many comfort mods available for the original Quest. They will be manufacturing two versions of their Elite Comfort Strap, the standalone strap at $49 or £49, and the more expensive strap with an internal battery upgrade plus a lovely looking matching white carry case at $119 or £119. Now I'm a tidy freak so I really like the idea of the integrated battery so I pre-ordered this item taking my overall spend to £419. Still cheaper than my original 120 gig Oculus which is now residing proudly on eBay. They will be supported by the perennial VR cover with their excellent replacement facial interfaces. Also, surprisingly, they have partnered with Logitech, who will be releasing their first in-ear buds specifically for the Quest 2. The G3333333. Or something. And also including a shorter 3.5mm jack for the existing G Pro headset. Now, I'm a big fan of Logitech and currently run a G933 Artemis Spectrum for my everyday PC use. So I may invest in a pair as they do look quite shiny. And now it's time for Noob of the Week. This is my mate Simon. He wanted to go with my Valve Index. Thousands and thousands of pounds worth of high-tech gear. And what is the first thing he does? Buried away in John Carmack's fascinating unscripted talk were two interesting little snippets. Firstly, the XR2 processor can do Wi-Fi 6, the brand new standard, which is potentially 250% faster than the previous standard. Imagine what this would mean for virtual desktop users who stream PC VR to their Quest. Not only a better image via the LCD panel at 90Hz, but maybe latency down into single figures. We'll see, and if there's any more information on this, I'll be on it straight away. Carmack also spoke about an air bridge for streaming wirelessly to the Quest, and my interpretation of this is they are working on it already. I'll let the big man speak. Uh, we still haven't announced a full like wireless connection uh, system for Link, and we have these interminable arguments internally about this, about quality bars, and I keep saying that you know, I love the fact that we have... I have existence proofs where whenever we argue about this, I can say right this very minute, someone is using a wireless VR streaming system and getting value from it. You know, it is not as good as being wired. It is not as good as we might hope. It might not meet your personal minimum quality bar, but it is clearly meeting some people's minimum quality bar and delivering value to them because they keep coming back and doing it. So I continue to beat that drum where I, you know, we should have some kind of, of an air link. It's time for Anorak Corner featuring Malcolm. 
Did you know that the imaginatively named Wi-Fi 6 standard, or as I like to call it, IEEE 802.11ax, is 55 times faster than the original standard 802.11b? It can handle data up to 3 gigabits per second in exceptional circumstances. I remember trying to download a picture of the lovely pint-sized Antipodean singer and actress Kylie Minogue on the old B standard Wi-Fi many years ago. It took ages, but to be honest, as soon as I saw the top of her lovely curly hair, I was done anyway. The Oculus Quest will not launch with the ability to play 90Hz initially due to conflict with the Guardian system causing stutter. Carmack mentioned that this was an unexpected hitch, but the solution is on its way. More interestingly, he mentioned that after speaking with engineers about the panel, they admitted that they had it running at a refresh rate of 120Hz, which could become an option later, down the line maybe, similar to the Valve Index's experimental 144Hz mode. He likened it to Scotty, the engineer from Star Trek, who was always able to squeeze just a little bit more out of the Enterprise's engines. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. I play Pistol Whip on my index using the 144Hz mode, and I definitely think that the high refresh rate is important for these high-energy rhythm action games, Beat Saber, Synth Riders, and Pistol Whip. And finally, John Carmack. As an engineer, he is very good at explaining difficult technical problems in, well, I was going to say layman's terms, but perhaps more to people like us who are into VR and love the tech side of things. Again, I'll just let the big man speak. But having things converged now on our VR platforms is an enormous relief. It's really hard to overstate how much I, you know, how much drama internally this has been over the years where you know, my vision for VR was always as this universal device. You know, we should be able to play games, we should be able to browse the web, we should be able to do productivity things, we should be able to connect to a PC, to cloud services, and all this. You know, it's virtual, we can do anything, it should be universal. But, I, uh, you know, a lot of the, most of the other founders were really about, we want this high-end, awesome gaming system. And this caused enormous tension through the years. And it's kind of ironic how we wound up with a system where we have this low-powered gaming-focused device, which wasn't really what anybody was aiming for at the beginning. But it's doing well for us, and we're clawing our way back towards universal platform in various ways. And the, you know, it's great to have a team that is really kind of all pulling in the same direction now. And we are getting people that have shipped a few headsets now, we know what we're doing, and I'm always pushing for go faster. You know, I'm never satisfied with all of this. There's so much more that we can do, but we're at least, you know, the derivative is in the right direction now. We are making some progress with it. I am so excited for the future of virtual reality now, so much so that I would normally be foaming at the mouth at the prospect of the Xbox Series X, but do you know what? I've actually cancelled my Game Pass and have put the Xbox up for sale and it has sat unused and unloved for months now. Instead, I'm foaming at the mouth over the prospect of the Quest 2 and what the future holds for this little beast. And remember, I thought the original Quest was a beast, so what has the new one got in store for us? Very, very exciting. Are you getting the new Quest? Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. Feel free to share, like, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload any new content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.